What if I told you that both 5,000 mile oil changes and 15,000 mile oil changes are misleading you? One is costing you thousands in unnecessary oil changes. The other is slowly destroying engines while manufacturers stay legally protected. And here's the most uncomfortable truth of all. Most engines that fail early followed the owner's manual perfectly, not because drivers were careless, but because the oil change advice was never designed for real-world driving. By the end of this video, you'll understand why Americans are told 5,000 miles, why Europeans are told 15,000 miles, who actually benefits from each number, and the real interval mechanics secretly follow on their own cars. Stay until the end, because the smartest oil change strategy isn't written in any manual. Section 1. The Oil Change War that confuses every driver Ask 10 drivers how often oil should be changed, and you'll hear two loud camps. Camp tra 1. Change it every 5,000 miles or your engine will die. Camp Lummer 2. Modern cars can go 15,000 miles. Anything less is a scam. Both sides are confident. Both sides sound logical. Both sides are incomplete. And here's the proof. The same engine, built in the same factory, using the same materials, gets completely different oil change intervals depending on the country it's sold in. That should already raise alarms. Section 2. The same engine. Two opposite rules. Let's look at a real example. Take a Toyota Camry 2.5L or a Honda 2.0L engine. In the United States, recommended oil change interval, $5,000, $7,500 miles. In Europe, recommended interval, 15,000 miles or one year. Same engine, same oil specification, same tolerances. So why the massive difference? Is European oil magic? Are American engines weaker? No, the answer has nothing to do with oil quality and everything to do with how oil change rules are written. Section 3. Why 5,000 miles became the rule in the U.S. Let's start with the American side. The 5,000 mile oil change didn't come from engineers. It came from quick lube businesses, dealership service departments, and outdated habits from the 1970s and 80s. Back then, engines ran rich, oil broke down fast, tolerances were loose, and conventional oil was garbage by today's standards. Back then, 3,000, 5,000 miles made sense. But here's the psychological trick that stuck. Oil is cheap, engines are expensive. That line is technically true, but it's also perfect marketing because it trains drivers to fear going too long, ignore modern oil chemistry, and never question the interval. And dealerships love it. Why? Because oil changes are loss leaders. They get you in the door. Once you're there, the upsells begin. Section 4. The Financial Incentive No One Talks About Here's an uncomfortable fact. In the US, shorter oil intervals mean more service visits. More visits mean more inspections, more recommendations, more repair approvals. This doesn't mean every mechanic is dishonest, but it does mean the system benefits from fear. Independent shop owners admit this openly. One veteran technician put it bluntly, if everyone followed 15,000 mile intervals, half the quick lube industry would disappear. That doesn't make 5,000 miles wrong. It makes it conveniently conservative. Section 5. Why Europe pushes 15,000 miles Now, let's flip the coin. Why does Europe push long intervals? It's not generosity. It's regulation. European manufacturers face strict environmental rules, disposal limits on used oil, and fleet emissions targets tied to maintenance costs. Longer intervals, reduce waste oil, lower total ownership cost on paper, and improve environmental metrics. But here's the key difference most people miss. European oil change intervals are written for ideal driving conditions. That means long highway trips, fewer cold starts, less idling, higher oil capacities, and strict adherence to oil specifications. In other words, Europe assumes you drive like an engineer designed the car, not like real life. Section 6. The problem with perfect conditions. Let's be honest, most drivers take short trips, idle in traffic, 
drive in extreme heat or cold, and shut the engine off before oil fully warms. That's a nightmare scenario for long oil intervals, because oil doesn't fail from mileage alone. It fails from fuel dilution, moisture accumulation, acid buildup, and additive depletion, and none of those show up on your odometer. Section 7. What actually kills oil, not miles. Here's what destroys oil faster than distance. Short trips. Oil never reaches full temperature. Moisture stays trapped. Direct injection engines. Fuel washes past rings. Oil thins out. Turbochargers. Oil cooks at extreme heat. Additives break down. Idling and stop-and-go traffic. High heat, low airflow. Oxidation accelerates. Small oil capacities. Less oil. Stasher faster contamination. You can hit all five of these conditions before 5,000 miles, which means in some cars, even 15,000 miles is insanity. Section 8. Why Oil Life Monitors Can't Save You Modern cars have oil life monitors. Sounds smart, right? Here's the problem. Oil life monitors estimate oil degradation. They do not measure oil condition. They use engine temperature, RPM, load, and runtime. They cannot detect fuel dilution, moisture, contamination, or additive collapse. That's why oil analysis labs routinely find oil at 40% life that's already chemically exhausted. Oil monitors are useful tools, not authority figures. Section 9. What oil analysis really shows. Independent labs like Blackstone and Polaris have tested thousands of engines. Here's what they consistently find. Many oils are still healthy at 5,000 miles. Many oils are dangerously degraded by 8,000 miles. A small number survive 15,000 miles, under perfect conditions only. The takeaway? Mileage alone tells you almost nothing, which brings us to the uncomfortable middle ground. Section 10. Why both sides are wrong. Here's the truth. Neither camp wants to admit 5,000 miles is often unnecessarily early. 15,000 miles is often dangerously late. Both numbers are simplifications, not strategies, and engines don't fail from averages. They fail from mismatches between oil chemistry and driving reality, between regulations and real-world use. So what's the correct answer? That's where part two begins, because now we'll reveal the interval professional mechanics quietly follow when 5,000 miles actually makes sense when 15,000 miles can be safe, and the single rule that protects engines better than any number. Section 11, the oil change interval mechanics. Use on their own cars. Here's a question most people never ask a mechanic. How often do you change oil in your own car? Not the customer's car, not the one under warranty, their personal vehicle, the one they want to last forever. The answer is almost never 5,000 and it's almost never 15,000. Most experienced mechanics quietly land in the middle, 7,000 to 8,500 miles, adjusted for conditions. Why? Because they understand something manuals don't explain. Oil change intervals are dynamic, not fixed. They change based on engine design, oil quality, driving style, and environment. Mechanics don't follow a number. They follow risk management. Section 12, when 5,000 miles actually makes sense. Let's be fair, there are times when a 5,000 mile oil change is the smartest move. If your car has any of these traits, shorter intervals are justified. Turbocharged engine direct injection, GDI, short daily trips, under 10 miles, heavy idling or city driving, high ambient temperatures, small oil capacity, under five quarts. In these engines, Fuel dilution happens fast. Additives deplete early. Oil darkens quickly for real reasons. In these cases, 5,000 miles isn't old school. It's preventive maintenance. This is why taxis, police vehicles, and fleet cars still run short intervals, even with full synthetic oil. Section 13, when 15,000 miles can be safe. Yes, really. Now let's talk about the other extreme. There are situations where 15,000 miles works, but the conditions must be nearly perfect. Mostly highway driving long trips, 30 plus minutes, naturally aspirated engine, large oil capacity, 
premium full synthetic oil, excellent air filtration, minimal idling. In this environment, oil reaches full temperature regularly, moisture burns off, additives last longer, oxidation stays low. This is why long intervals work in parts of Europe, where daily commutes often involve sustained highway speeds. But here's the catch. The moment you break these conditions, the 15,000-mile rule collapses. Most drivers unknowingly do. Section 14. Why oil turns black and why it's not the problem. Many drivers panic when oil turns black quickly. They assume the oil is dirty. It must be bad. That's wrong. Dark oil often means detergents are working, contaminants are suspended, sludge is being prevented. What matters is not color, it's viscosity stability, fuel dilution percentage, additive reserve. That's why two oils can look identical, and one is still protecting while the other is already failing. Color is a visual trick, not a diagnostic tool. Section 15, the single rule that beats all mileage numbers. Here it is. The rule mechanics trust more than any sticker or app. Change oil based on how you drive, not how far you drive. Ask yourself, do I idle a lot? Do I drive short trips? Does my engine run hot? Is it turbocharged? Is oil capacity small? The more yes answers you have, the shorter your interval should be. This is why two identical cars can need completely different oil schedules. Mileage is just a timer. Conditions are the real clock. Section 16, why manufacturers can't tell you this. You might wonder, if this is true, or why don't manufacturers explain it clearly? Because they can't. Owner's manuals must be simple, comply with regulations, cover global markets, and protect warranty liability. They are written for legal clarity, not mechanical optimization. That's why manuals use fixed numbers, even when engineers know reality is more complex. As one OEM engineer admitted off record, we give a safe average. The rest is up to the owner. Section 17, the smart interval strategy, real world version. Here's the strategy professional mechanics quietly follow. Turbo or GDI engines, 5,000, 7,000 miles mixed driving, modern NA engines, 7,000, 8,500 miles highway heavy, ideal conditions, up to 10,000 miles with oil analysis. Never blindly push 15,000 miles unless oil analysis proves it's safe. That's not fear-based, that's data-based. Section 18, the cheapest engine insurance you'll ever buy. Here's the irony. Oil is one of the cheapest components in your car, yet it protects the most expensive parts. Saving $40 by skipping an oil change can cost you. Timing chain wear, turbo failure, ring sticking, oil consumption, or catastrophic bearing damage. Oil changes don't fail engines. Bad oil decisions do. Final thought, stop arguing numbers. Start thinking like a mechanic. The real enemy isn't 5,000 miles, and it's not 15,000 miles. The enemy is blind adherence, ignoring driving reality, and trusting averages over conditions. The smartest drivers don't ask, how often should I change oil? They ask, what does my engine actually need? And that single mindset will keep your engine alive longer than any sticker ever could. Now tell me in the comments, how often do you change your oil? And what kind of driving do you really do? Because your answer might explain why some engines last 300,000 miles and others don't make it past 120,000. Subscribe for more real-world car truths. No myths, no marketing, just mechanics logic.